For Malik Willis, the wait is over. Didn't know where he would go. Some people had him as a top 10 overall selection. He has to wait into the third round. Goes at number 86, the 86th overall selection, and goes to the Tennessee Titans. So Malik Willis has his NFL team, and it's in Tennessee. All right, let's get Brady Quinn in the mix. He's our quarterback, our All-American. Um, does this make sense? And what do you think the plan is for Malik Willis in Tennessee? I think it's it, it makes sense in the, in the in the fact that we knew Malik Willis needs some time to develop, and he's going to have at least a year behind Ryan Tannehill. They're not moving on from him, even as bad as he played in the playoffs this past year, uh, ultimately ending their season. Um, they're still not going to move on. The dead cap hits too big. So it would have to be probably two years from now where they can make that transition. But this gives Malik Willis the opportunity to learn from Todd Downing, their play caller, to learn from Ryan Tannehill, who's been the consummate pro, and be able to you know, you know, know, grow as far as a quarterback, especially from the pocket. We talked about that before the draft started today. That's his biggest weakness. You know, he's got a lot of special tools and intangibles. The arm strength's there. You see his ability to improvise, improvise, get out and run. All those things that you have to do at this level. Those, and those are some of those things you can't teach. You're either blessed with or you're not. The things that he's deficient on, you can't teach, but he still needs some time. So this situation, as we talked about before the draft today, actually works out really well, I think, for, for Malik Willis. You know, a lot of people talked about the drop and how it could hurt them. I said it might be a blessing in disguise, and I think falling into this situation makes a lot of sense for him. Well said. Um, he goes to Tennessee. Look, their quarterback is crazy athletic. Ryan Tannehill was a wide receiver at Texas A&M. I mean, he's a big guy, athletic, fast. And now they bring in Malik Willis, another athlete. So there's at least some synergy there. Does this seem like a good fit to you, Pete? You know, it actually does. This is about where I thought he should go, third round. I thought he was a third-round quarterback. And now you get to go in and watch Ryan Tannehill. And we know there's an outcry in Nashville to get Ryan Tannehill out of there. He's faded at times in key moments, and there, there is a lot of people pushing back on him. So go in, spend the year learning, watch him, learn how to hand the ball off to Derrick Henry because you're going to be doing a lot of that. Uh, and then next year I think he competes for the job and, and or as takes a third the job. Year, as a third-round pick, he could take two years if he has to. There's no pressure of a first-rounder like get him in there, get him in there. It's, it's a third-round pick. So... Is this a blessing in disguise that he goes to the third round, even though it's going to cost him some money in his first contract and all that kind of stuff? No that? question. No question. EK, how many times have you heard me mention when you talk about getting drafted? The situation is more important than the money. Because if you go into an ideal situation, eventually... You'll make the money. You'll make the money. This is an ideal situation for Malik Willis, similar to everything that Pete hit on. He's not. He won't be forced into action. He can learn. How, what it means to be a pro on and off the football field. And this offense will fit his skill set, being able to utilize his mobility, the athleticism, and he's a physical runner. And I understand we believe Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback. But the last time we saw Ryan Tannehill, he was throwing interceptions to the secondary players there for the Cincinnati Bengals. A huge, disappointing he's loss. He's not going to be the quarterback? Well, he I will was, be the well, quarterback. So what I'm, what I'm saying true, is... Too. It's also true that he let his team... I mean, not the only reason, obviously, have Derrick Henry, but they were the one seed in the AFC, and you can't do that without having a deficient quarterback, can you? I mean, he's efficient, but the thing about Ryan Tannehill, we don't believe in him in right. certain moments. That's the thing, and that's why the Tennessee Titans fans are annoyed with him. He's a good quarterback, but it's something about Ryan Tannehill in certain key moments, we don't believe in him. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.